session down all yes uh, hello everyone so we are in the uh, room of big chain connected cars we are, we are with bart javid and sam and uh, feel free to unmute yourself to ask questions and uh, yeah and i will present today the fleet management platform our connected car projects uh, yeah, Sam. Also, free. Uh, uh, feel free to unmute yourself. Present to, uh, present yourself if you would like, and yeah, we could also start. Sure. Um, I can give a little bit about myself. I'm a, I'm a smart contract developer at Ikigai Technologies. Um, where our flagship product is Logosphere, um, which hasn't been published yet, but it's a semantic graph on a side chain. Um. And then we've got several other several other pro projects. Um, we've got a game company, and we've got a an NFT marketplace that we're working on. Um, but yeah, I just popped in because I was I was curious to hear about the project and kind of curious about um, what you're doing. Yeah, interesting. So you have uh, different uh, backgrounds, and yeah, it looks uh, very very interesting. And also, feel free if you like to post. Uh, in the chat, your contact or Twitter or projects, uh, yeah, feel free to post that. I will post also all links if you like to check it after that. I will post it after that. Okay, so I will begin sharing my screen. Yes. So, yeah, do you see my screen now? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So, um, yeah, last weekend I have presented the whole project, our peak chain projects, because we have four proposals in uh, the current fund nine. Uh, but uh, during this session, I will just, yeah, I will present a general overview about our projects. And I have said last week, and I have presented in the Idea Fest the whole project. This is the presentation well, of the Idea Fest. And this time, I will uh, would like to be I summarize a little bit the 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 project and just present more the fleet management one. Okay, to begin, uh, um, I didn't say I didn't present myself. I am Usama, the CEO and uh, co-founder of Pixoft GmbH, a software company based in Germany, and um, yes, we have submitted four proposals in uh, Fund Nine. So uh, how did we come up with this idea of the connected car projects? We have noticed that the majority of projects in the crypto space are generally about DeFi, NFT, and so on. And there is a real need for real life utility use cases. That means um, any um, average person can use such dApps in order to attract more people to the Cardano ecosystem. In fact, mobility services like, for example, car sharing, ride sharing, fleet management, and so on, they are increasing in popularity, not only in Germany and Europe, but also worldwide. I, I can't hear you as well. Yeah, I just lost audio.
Okay, could you hear me now, maybe? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. So I'm using this Jabra and uh, I don't know where it is maybe a technical problem with it. Yeah. Okay, sorry for the interruption. So I will share again my screen. And things may break. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So now I think you can see my screen, right? Yep. Okay, perfect. So as I said, uh, we are focused on building something which is real life utility use cases uh, on Cardano. That's why we have, um, and uh, we have implemented such solutions or, or we have written such proposals and implemented a prototype. After that, I will present also a prototype for our solution. So we have four, four projects. First of all, the car wallet device, second, the car sharing platform and the fleet management platform and the ride sharing, which is Uber-like platform. Yes, and uh, what is interesting, we have, uh, before writing our proposals, we have already made a feasibility of the project. We have implemented a prototype in order to see how, um, uh, how if the project is feasible from the technical side, and we have succeeded implementing that. And I will present that after, at the end of the presentation. Okay, of course, the Problem statement, I think we know all the blockchain, but the problems uh, that the block blockchain technology is solving is related with privacy issues, security issues, with governance uh, issues. So um, I think in order to be honest, it's um, all projects um, we should have in the future, we should have an alternative, either a centralized solution or a decentralized solution, but I think all apps, okay. For example, the connected car apps, okay, we should have the, in the future, I think from a point of view, an alternative from centralized and decentralized. That means we should migrate the current centralized solutions to other decentralized solutions. And after that, after that the market will decide which, which is better, huh? the user. So of course the decentralized solution is the advantages of the decentralized solutions, privacy, security, or reducing fees and also uh, optimizing the governance. This is the solution, the advantages. So I will present here just the, uh, the architecture of the solution. Here it's the car sharing, the architecture of solution of the car sharing, but also the fleet management is, uh, is similar. Just for the fleet management, we don't have a smart contract. Here is the car sharing, for example, it's uh, the smart contract. There is a smart contract which calculates the uh, the fees, the fees for the car sharing after getting the data directly from the car. Okay. So what is the difference? I can say in order to conclude or to, to summarize what we make, what's also our uh, uh, added value as a company. We retrieve the data from directly from the car. We process manage this data, process it, and send it to the blockchain, okay? That means no one can hack this data and no one can manipulate this data. For example, the speed, okay, or the, the speed, or uh, for example, the, uh, um, the engine RPM or other data. The speed, I can get, get it from another Web2 application from my, from my phone. So why using such complicated solution with the Web3? The answer is simple, because we these applications, which are centralized one, they can could be hacked and could be tracked. So anyone can theoretically, the companies, the centralized companies could uh, track us, track our data, and uh, of course our uh, mobility data, our sensible data. That's why for our solution, you can see here, 
uh, we get the data directly from the car using the uh, OBD2, OBD2 part. In order to be a little bit simple, in the car, there are uh, road data, okay? These road data are in the CAN boost system of the car, okay? That means, for example, the in the engine RPM, speed, mileage, and so on, exists in the car, okay? And we cannot hack the CAN boost of the car. We cannot access it directly. There is no, there is no connection, okay? The centralized solutions, which uh, uh, are actually there, there is, for example, on my mobile app for Constructor X, for example, Volkswagen and so on, they are connected to the car, okay, through the OBT2 device, but also these data are connected to the centralized servers of the constructor. And that could be a little bit problematic because you can, these data could be tracked. For us as big chain, we will retrieve the data directly, securely from the OBT2 device. We decode it. There is also a little bit complicated uh, databases in all that you decode the data, process it, and send it to the blockchain. And you can see the uploading data using a SIM card, processing and building the transaction and sending it to the blockchain. Of course, you can see here for the actual solution, there is a big chain server. Okay? That means it's not 100% decentralized solution, but it's the first iteration. In almost every uh, blockchain solution existing on the market, the step one is to have uh, a server in between, but after that we should have a car wallet. That means in the future, we should have a car wallet device, which is connected directly to the OBD2 part. Uh, for you, of course, please, if you have any question, you can interrupt, interrupt me anytime because uh, I, uh, I'm using some uh, technical details. For example, the definition of the OBD2 part, every vehicle has an OBD2 part. It's standard in the uh, industry, in the uh, automotive industry. It's known, okay? You can find this OBD2 part on each car, okay? Under the cockpit of the vehicle. And from there, you can get the uh, make the diagnosis of the ECUs, okay, of the vehicle. From there, you can also get the data, these raw data, okay, which are not uh, human readable and should be decoded, okay. So returning to this is the definition of the OPT two. Okay, and now we return to the solution, the future solution. Our also solution is to have in the future, after some iterations of the project, to have a, card, a wallet device. That means uh, the car, it's an IoT device. And you, when you see in all the research papers or every, um, in all the research papers that also what uh, other projects are doing in other blockchains, they want to, uh, to embed a vehicle, a wallet to, uh, to each IoT device. Why? Because the IoT devices are connecting, should connect to the blockchain and to other also uh, IoT devices. That's why they should have an embedded wallet in order to communicate with the blockchain. Of course, the car is also an IoT device. That means we should build, we will build in the future and also, also to conclude, in the future we will have wallets for cars. It's um, the question is not um, how or if, if, but is the question of time and which blockchain will have that? You will have many blockchain. Which blockchain would be the leader? For us, our um, our goal is to be leader and to implement now such wallet. Okay, because it's not. I can say it's not our innovation. It will come for sure. For 100% vehicle wallet for car. But the question of who will begin with it, which blockchain will also be the leader on the market? Okay, that's why we said it's time to implement such solution now. Although Cardano blockchain is not scalable, but there are also other scale, uh, scalability solution. We can speak about that in the uh, after the presentation. So to conclude, for us, we will build also this uh, this vehicle wallet, which retrieves the data from the OBT2 port, 
decode it, for example, mileage, timestamp, and so on. And also uh, uh, send the transaction to the blockchain, directly to the blockchain. Uh, for now, it should be a Cardano node, the whole Cardano node, it should be running on the uh, this uh, wallet device. Of course, it's not very, very practical, but it's the first iteration that should be implemented. And after that, of course, uh, that uh, in the future, there is also, uh, maybe you follow also, I'm sure you follow the, uh, the, uh, uh, the what uh, IOG is suggesting uh, that means we will have maybe we will not uh, we will not we will not we mustn't install a Cardano node in order to transact with the blockchain and it could be also this solution could be also decentralized and so on like like the uh, lace wallet I think as the presentation of this lightweight wallet and there are also many scaling solutions that means. Hopefully, in one to one year, we will mustn't um, install the full Cardano node and touch wallet in order to transact to the blockchain. Such a scaling solution will come for sure. Okay. Uh, this is the architecture. If you have questions, just let me know. This is the car wallet device. But uh, for us, for the... Uh, for the fleet management platform. This is the other. Okay. This is actually our uh, our proposal in front nine, the fleet management platform. And what, what we want to build, okay? We want to build a fleet management platform. That means um, generally, the problem is there are um, in logistic, for example, services or logistic companies. The companies should monitor their fleet, fleet of cars, vehicles, and so on. That means there are also, of course, in the in the market currently Web two solutions, but centralized solutions in order to monitor the fleet. Monitoring the fleet that means monitoring, for example, the driving behavior, the uh, the mileage and in order to optimize the cost of fuel and also in order to optimize and also these data are sensitive for example the um, uh, the trip data and so on for example for logistic services they optimize their uh, their trajectories okay and such trajectories are sensitive data for such companies and it should not be hacked and should not be tracked for competitivity reasons, for security reasons, and so on. For example, for logistic companies and so on. That's why such solution for fleet management is very, very important. And this privacy and security issues, it's, they can say it's number one priority, the priority one for such, uh, for such use case for fleet management. Yeah, now for the prototype, which is, which, which is a basis, or could we could we say it's a basis for all uh, connected car projects? We can proudly announce and say that we have the first car connected to the Cardano blockchain, and we admit that uh, we don't have uh, uh, we are not aggressive in the marketing side, <laughs> but such information should be uh, should be widely connected. We have successfully implemented that solution. That means we, we have a testing car vehicle, which is the Volkswagen Passat. We have a dedicated hardware, which uh, gets the data. And after that, we send the data to a testing server, okay? And in the future, when uh, we vote for the proposals and we get funded, we will implement the complete server. We have implemented just a testing server in order to test the visibility of the project. So to uh, to return to the solution, you can, as you see here, it's the uh, it's the hardware. Of course, here just for uh, presentation uh, uh, yeah, goals. Uh, of course, it should be inside the vehicle, not outside the vehicle. We made it outside the vehicle in order to show the uh, the hardware. Okay, it's um, a special hardware. Of course, we didn't construct the hardware. But it's uh, a hardware that we uh, we uh, we got. And, uh, but it's uh, an open source one. That means we can get the data directly from the car. We decode it using uh, a dedicated uh, database. 
And after that, you see here also the SIM card, which is embedded with the hardware. So that means the data are sent to the testing server and the transaction. Once you ended the trip, the, uh, the, this hardware sends the data directly to the testing server and the testing server uh, also get a notification and decodes, process the data and send the transaction to the blockchain. That's the, the, uh, the prototype. As you can see here, it's just, uh, I can say, a silly data. Of course, it should be decoded, the data. Huh? Here, uh, just for, I can say, prototype or testing uh, purposes, you see here the metadata, which are available. You can get also the transaction data. But uh, here you can see, for example, the company, maximum vehicle speed. For example, what we have uh, um, practically implemented we have implemented a script which when you uh, when you drive with your vehicle checks the maximum uh, speed and gets the timestamp of this maximum speed when you 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 attain the maximum speed and what was the maximum speed this is uh, the uh, the silly script that we have implemented uh, as a proof of feasibility and we can say we can see here after finishing this uh, trip, we got the data, which is the maximum speed when we got it, and also the speed time. Uh, this is here the uh, yeah. the, uh, the the data, and also I have I have a video for that. Maybe if you like, I can also show you the video. It was not. Uh, plan to show such video, but I will show that maybe it's better. I've got a question actually. Yes, um, of course. So, uh, if you're, you, you were talking earlier about like um, non traceability, you don't, you don't like the idea of, of centralized companies controlling trip data, um, which makes sense. Um, but if you're if you're passing the trip data in metadata on transactions such that it's publicly av available on a public blockchain, that seems more traceable in a sense because now anyone has access to that trip data. Is there, are is there like a a sense where you're kind of splitting up data so that the more sensitive data is um, maybe handled like on your server side or in the redeemer? Um, versus is, is that kind of the approach you're taking? Yes, for here, uh, the question, of course, it should, not, it should not be there. What we have implemented now is just uh, to, to show that we can send such data ah. to the blockchain and we can transact. It's just a silly uh, first iteration of proof of feasibility. But Got of it. course, it should not be. <laughs> this is of course we we should not uh, make this data available. It's uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Course. Okay. That makes sense. Yes. Of course, it should be decoded and uh, it should be coded and just decoded from the private key, for example, of the fleet manager. You see, but here it's just the first iteration, and just we it's the feasibility that the car connects to the blockchain and can send the data. And second thing, we want to show that uh, these data are available and also for people, for average person, okay? We can, we must show to them. I can, I can uh, give him the transaction ID and can say to him, please just see the transaction ID with the data. Of course, it's not the commercial solution, of course. We cannot commercialize such solution now. It's uh, step by step. Uh, step one is transacting is uh, possible. And uh, yeah, I can show you something here interesting. Okay. Do you see my screen here now? The video. Yeah. Uh, okay, perfect. So here I have the OBD2, uh, it's connected to the OBD2 port, okay? And uh, yeah, this is our hardware. 
Uh, and it's connected with the SIM card. Okay, I go further. This is the OBD2 for there. And here now, you see, I am driving. It's 12 uh, uh, hours. And uh, you see now the maximum speed, okay? The maximum speed that I will attain is the 86 uh, kilometer per hour. Okay? I'm in Germany, not in mile, but kilometer per hour at uh, 12 o'clock, approximately at 12 o'clock. Okay. This is the maximum date, the maximum uh, speed. Okay. And, okay. And after that, I stopped. Just I stopped. It didn't make anything. Okay. I stopped the. I checked in my server and the transaction is sent. And after that, I checked in the Cardano uh, in the uh, Cardano scan, of course, in the test net. And we can see here the uh, I think now one second. Just checking, checking. Yes. Now oh, this is the transaction. Uh, metadata yes you see the metadata of the company the maximum speed is 64 okay and another thing in order to show also uh, another thing we have attained 68 at maximum speed but it's showing 64 why because uh, maybe you know all of you when uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the uh, the speed which is shown in the car it's not the current speed of the vehicle. From security, I think uh, things and so on, the constructors uh, make plus three, plus four kilometer per hour, I think. Uh, this is, uh, for example, in the case of Volkswagen Passat, in this car, it's uh, plus four. That means the constructor, mm -hmm. the raw data, the actual speed, maximum speed was 64 during this time, and not say 68, what is shown. And that showed the data is correct. It's uh, got directly from the CAN boot. And also the, uh, yeah, you can see also the here, the timestamp and the timestamp. It's got from the vehicle and not from the, uh, from outside, not from the server. That's very, very important thing. All the data that we got from the car, except of course the company name, that's what we, uh, uh, and the other data and so on. This is the, so this is just a small demo and uh, yeah, one, you can be, this is the transaction, I think, yes, this one. Yeah, yeah just uh, we have made a small feasibility, I can say feasibility. Uh, feasibility uh, study in order to show we can do it, okay? And of course, we need uh, the time and effort and so on to implement the full uh, the full way of fleet management project, fleet management application. We have a software company. We can, of course, uh, easily implement such uh, web uh, solutions with the app, with the front end and so on. Okay, so our information about the company, we are picked up here in Biha, we are in Bopartal in Germany, I'm the CEO and uh, uh, co-founder, Abdurrahim is a software engineer and my co-founder. And what's, the, what's very, very important thing, I think trusting the team is more important than trusting the project, I think, from my point of view. That's why uh, you can check also all our experience. I have experienced more than five years in Volkswagen in connected car projects, plus my experience in software quality test automation. Uh, I'm Plutus Pioneer and Atala Prism Pioneer. Abdurrahim also same thing with plus 10 software engineering experience. Mohammed also connected car projects, plus five years experience connected car projects. Habib Mogdi software engineer. Neila and Ramla for accounting, for administration, and coordination tasks. And also one very, very important thing, you can check also our experience, our projects. We are also all living and uh, here in Germany and working from here. 
and you can check all legal details of our company. It's publicly available. And uh, another thing, we have also a lot of certifications, project management professional, or software quality, ISTQB, ITO, product owner, and so on. So we have valid uh, experience that could be, uh, because, um, sorry, to be honest, a lot of projects that are around, I don't mean here in Cardano, Cardano, we have high quality projects, high quality people, but unfortunately in other blockchain, our projects, there are a lot of people, they don't have experience. They, you cannot check them. I think checking the company, checking the person, is most important than checking the project in order to see if it's feasible because we are not here in order to get some money for just one iteration. We are here to uh, for the uh, future iterations of the project. And we are also, uh, please, I invite you to check uh, all details of our projects in Medium. We have also a staking pool, small staking pool. It's very, very small staking pool, but we said, say, okay, we will, uh, yeah, we will build such staking pool in order to show our uh, our engagement, okay? Our engagement towards uh, Cardano and so on and our know-how. And uh, I invite you also to check the big chain medium posts. Uh, there you can see I post regularly about Bluetooth Pioneer uh, program and some Bluetooth concepts. And you can check also all the details of our uh, yeah projects there. Yeah, well, that's all from my side. Yeah, if you have any question, yeah, feel free to ask. Uh, I think I don't think I have any more questions. Um, but I, I do gotta take off actually. Um, so I just wanted to say thanks for the presentation. Uh, interesting project. You're welcome. I'll be following. Uh, I'll be following what you guys are doing for sure. You are welcome. Yeah. Thanks a lot uh, for being here. Yeah. For sure. All right. Later. Uh, it, yeah. Thanks, Osama. Uh, it was very interesting. I I just wonder. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm too simple. What is the end target from you? you your your you're putting the traject into a transaction. What is the end target of what? What is the the who benefits from this? Who? Um, see, I'm not that familiar in the uh, fleet management either. So, could you, could you explain that to me, please? Yes, very good question, of course. So, um, the benefit is privacy and security issues because. For example, for fleet management or car sharing and so on. For example, when you rent a car, okay, and you have your own car, you these data or uh, mileage, speed, and so on, they are stored, for example, with Uber, okay, okay, they are stored in the servers of Uber. That means they can could potentially be hacked. They could track you, theoretically, okay, and so on. Yeah. So the ultimate solution, you know, that to be sure not to be hacked or tracked on anything is to use a blockchain solution. That means the car, for example, you have the speed and so on. Okay. The car should send the data not to centralized server, but to decentralized server, decentralized platform, which is the blockchain. And it should be coded. Okay. With your private key. Yeah. That means no one have access to it. You are 100% sure. No one can track or hack the data. Just you own the data. Okay? This is... Uh, uh, yeah. Is there your... The, if I uh, rent a car or an Uber, I have my own SIM card and OVD connection. Yes. Is that right? Is it and I and I connect it to the car? Is that uh, or is it, does the car have it? If you do car sharing, is it just, you, are you saying does it, does it go to the person or is it on the car? And see who who pays who who eventually pays for it? Um, Very good question. 
yes we will have what we suggested is i will show you something what we um, okay just one second uh, i will share my screen okay you will see here okay um no not this one i'm sorry Okay, you see this device, it's uh, what we want to build, okay? This device yeah. should be okay. available yes, yeah. for everyone. And it allows your car, what you, as a user, okay? Car sharing service user, for example, when you take the rent the car, you will yeah. do nothing, okay? But just you will see this, uh, this small device, which is black plug, plugged in in the OBT2 port, okay? And yeah. this device allows you to connect to the blockchain directly. You will do, do nothing, and you will have your um, uh, your your mobile app, okay? And you can connect, you can give, uh, you can also get the data securely from the blockchain, okay? Yeah. And not connecting it from uh, the servers for Uber, so for, from Uber and so on. So no one can hack you. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. For example, it's it's very very simple. Uh, of course, it's more complicated because there are a lot of uh, um, uh, solutions. First of all, we will not implement it directly. Okay, uh, that means we will have uh, for the first iteration a big chain server. And after that, uh, we will have the hardware wallet and so on. But um, in order to be honest, okay, there, there is uh, other steps before uh, going there, okay. But the yeah. ultimate solution in the future, you have a hardware device connects the car directly, and you have nothing to do. Just uh, use another uh, app which is Big Chain and not Uber or yeah, that's all, which is secure. Okay, yeah. That's great. Thanks for the presentation, and I'll uh, I'll, 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 I'll I'll find you and I'll, I'll vote for you. I'll give you a vote. That uh, no, it's, it looks like a good one. Um, yeah. And uh, I'll talk to you. You are welcome. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And uh, okay. yeah, let's stay in contact. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You are welcome. So uh, maybe if you have questions, uh, feedback, uh, you said you you were also assessor for the project. Maybe you yeah, yeah. Feedback. Yes, yeah, so feedback. Actually, now uh, I may have to refer it once more. But uh, as far as I remember the details, I'll I'll also vote for you uh, because I like uh, the proposals. Thank you. Uh, the uh, the ones I assessed and uh, the ones which I could not assess, but I will vote for all of them, inshallah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's uh, very nice, and uh, we hope that we get also the feedback and the support from the community because your support is what we make us proceed and implement such uh, real life utility use cases. And it's just the first uh, iteration of the project. Of course, we will. Uh, get uh, more iterations in the future. Thanks a lot yeah. for your support. Yeah, yeah thanks. Bye. Thank okay, thank you. Have a nice, nice evening. Bye-bye.